The Magic Detective, starring the world's greatest living magician, Blackstone. He tells you the inside story of The Devil's Cauldron. And right after the story, Blackstone will explain tricks that you yourself can perform. Reveal the guarded secrets of the world's greatest living magician. And now, stand by for Blackstone, the magic detective. I've got a little game I want you to play today, Alan. What is it? Uh, bring out the cauldron, Rhoda. Well, I'm just heating it. I'll be there in a second. You know, Alan, I call this a game, but it isn't really. It's a, it's a scientific experiment. Uh, what do you mean? Rhoda's bringing in a cauldron of molten metal, and I want to see just how long you can keep your hand in it. I have a stopwatch hey, here. Hey, hey, I... hey, hey, hey. Hmm? Is this a joke? Uh, here's the kettle, Blackstone. I think it's hot enough. The metal's all melted anyway. Oh, fine. You asked if this were a joke, Alan. Does it look like one? No. No, it doesn't. Look, Blackstone, nobody can put their hands in that stuff and then not, not get burned. Scared, Alan? You're darn right I am. I wouldn't put my hand in that for anything on earth. I think I am crazy. Well, then I guess Rhoda will have to do it. Okay, Maestro. I'm not afraid. Rhoda Brent, don't you dare do anything as silly as that. I won't let you, even if Blackstone will. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What are you laughing at? I don't see anything funny. Oh, I guess you better tell him the story, Blackstone. Yes, I guess we better, or he'll be sure we're both out of our minds. Well, it all started before the war on an island in the South Seas. While we were there, a man named Mendez came to see me. He was the owner of a large copra plantation and in desperate trouble. You must help me, Mr. Blackstone. Well, what's the trouble? The kahuna. The kahuna is ruining my business. I cannot get natives to work on my plantation. Well, what's the kahuna? The kahuna has power to call forth the gods to create earthquakes and floods. Oh, come now. You can't believe that. I am island-born, Miss Brent. We of the islands know that many strange things have happened in the name of the native gods. But it's unbelievable that an intelligent, well-educated man could believe... Whether I believe in the kahuna is unimportant, but I must have natives to work my plantation. Uh, Where can I find this uh, witch doctor? I have never seen her. But my natives tell me that she holds ceremonies every night on the far headland over yonder. Oh, on that point of land stretching out into the ocean? Yes, that is a place that has long been sacred to our native gods. Will you take us to her tonight? Yes. There is one more thing that I must know. Anything I can tell you. What does she want your natives to do? She wants them to migrate from this island to another. She wants this place to be given back to the gods. If the kahuna is not stopped, soon all will leave. Well, Mendez, you call for us tonight. I'll help you if I can. Uh, how much farther do we have to scramble over these rocks? My shoes are almost cut to ribbon. Not much farther. Already you can hear the sea crashing on the rocks. Yes. Yeah, well. Whoa, whoa. Uh, Listen. The kahuna chanting. She's on the other side of this crack. There she is. Listen to what she's saying. Look at her, Blackstone. She's a white woman. Look at her blonde hair floating out behind her. The God of war will descend on you. Your homes will be burned. Your children will die at the great by Pakeh. By Pakeh. No wonder they are frightened. What's that? Leprosy. Oh, the sickness that has already killed thousands of the natives. They call it the living death. There will be death in life for your children unless you go from here. Go, I tell you. I have the power to give the living death. Watch. She's putting Watch. her hand into that kettle over the fire. The water boils and bubbles, but it does not harm me. He does not touch those with my cocaine. The gods have given it to me. And I will pass it on to you and to your children. And they you free from this island. The gods want the land of their own. I knew that girl. Now, Rhoda. Yes. Do you understand what you're to do? Yes, I understand it. But I wish we could have done it while we were here last night. 
This is the second pair of shoes I've ruined on these rocks. It will be worth it. Well, I suppose so. There they come. There's the white kahuna and her followers. Oh, Oh, my people. You have not gone yet, oh, my people. But tonight is your last chance. Your last chance of life. Now the cauldron boils. And it turns my hand. Please do it. All right, Rhoda. Good luck. woman is not a kahuna. I am. Who are you? I am Pele, the volcano goddess. And I say this woman is no kahuna of mine. She lies. Grab her. Oh, oh, now, if you are the goddess of the volcano, you will not be afraid to put your hand in the boiling water. Push her hand into it. See, it does not harm me. The water does not spoil the arm of the volcano goddess. But bring on my cauldron. Here it is, Charlotte. You see, I have here a cauldron of molten metal, hotter by far than boiling water. Watch. I run my hand through it. I let it run down my arm. This is true magic. Now, if the Kahuna thinks she is so great, let her try to put her hands in molten metal. Let us see her try it. No! Oh, she is afraid. See, she is no kahuna. Stop her. Do not let her escape. Get her, Black Star. I got her. Who was the blonde kahuna? The... What was she doing all that mumbo-jumbo for? Well, you remember I said I recognized her? Yes. I'd seen her years before in Berlin. She was a dancer who married someone high in the Nazi party. But what on earth was she doing out in the Pacific then? Well, this was before the war, you remember. She was a German agent sent out there to frighten the natives off the island so that the Nazis could build a secret airfield. They couldn't do it while the natives were still there because word of their activities might have leaked out. And it was against all treaty. <laughs> I'll be darned. Say, Blackstone, uh, how about Rhoda sticking her hands into that melted metal in the boiling water? Why wasn't she scalded? Well, that boiling water gambit is an old Hindu trick, Alan. Hot water is like hot air, you know. It rises to the top. The first few moments that liquid boils, all the heat is at the top. If you stir it with your hands, the cold water is mixed with the scalding liquid, and it is cool enough for a human hand to stand. That only works for a few minutes, of course. And what about the hot molten metal? Does that rise, too? No. You see, the metal would have to reach a very high temperature before it would melt at all. Well, then, how on earth... Well, it's uh... simple. Now, watch. I'll stick my arm into this cauldron of metal right now. Oh, Rhoda, no, no, no. Oh, Alan, yes, yes. See, it doesn't hurt me. But why not? Because, Alan, that isn't molten metal at all. It's mercury. It just looks like metal. Oh, so that's how you did it. Yes, Alan, and that's how another mystery was solved by magic. Well, Blackstone, what is it this time? Just a simple little trick with matches. Uh, here, here's a box of matches right here. Oh, now let me. What do I do? First, you empty the matches from the box on this table. <laughs> Looks as if we're going to play jack draw. No, it's just a little different than that, Rhoda. Just a little different. Now, separate eight matches from the pile. That's the number we use. One, two, three. Uh, Rhoda, hmm? I bet you move your lips when you read. Oh, quiet. <laughs> now what, Blackstone? All you do now is lay the matches in such a way that you can pick up seven matches with one match. You said this was a simple trick. It is, when you know how. You're on your own, Rhoda. Uh, Alan, you'll have to help. I haven't even got one half of an idea how to begin. Now, you're going to pick up seven matches with one match. Build up some sort of a thingamajig out of seven. <laughs> Place it on one match. Alan is thinking in the right direction, Rhoda. Oh, well, I get an idea of that, sort of. Now, I'll put one flat and put two across and the rest on top of those in different directions. Whoops, there they go. Oh, Blackstone, they won't stay on one match. Oh, wait... Maybe I can pile them and shove one under and balance with... Uh-oh, there they go again. <laughs> Rhoda, your hand was as steady as a tightrope in a high wind. Uh, well, you do it, Alan, if you can. Of course, you practice with those chopsticks in a Chinese restaurant. Well, I'll run along while you both struggle. Ask me for the answer when I come back. <laughs> Don't tell me that it can be done. This time, Blackstone, you're really playing tricks on all of us. Why, I've never been known to play tricks on anyone. Mm. Now, look closely. It's child's play. Well, that explains everything. Alan and I just aren't children. Oh, oh. (laughs) 
Rhoda, I'm not so sure about you. <laughs> well, your idea, Alan, of building on one match, which I lay there on the table flat like that, was correct. But then what? Then lay one match across, extending well to the right. Uh-huh. Then one across, extending to the left. Go on from there, Rhoda. You mean place one another extending to the right? That's it. Oh, and see. another to the left. Then one to the right. And one to the left. Well, isn't that a cute setup? Looks like a rowboat with three pairs of oars. Looks more like a centipede to me. Uh, but what about the seventh match? I placed the last match across the six that extend left and right. Mm-hmm. Then I delicately pick up the bottom match from the table and lift slowly and carefully. We're, we're doing it, Alan. Why, all the matches are coming up. Seven matches lifted by one match. Box, don't leave me tell you. You've got a great little device there. <laughs> I admit it, Alan, I admit it. <laughs> But now you know how to do it. And our listeners know how to do it. And when they get out their matchboxes to try it, the results should be perfect. I hope you like that trick, ladies and gentlemen. And until next time, this is Blackstone saying good magic and goodbye. next time when the world's greatest living magician, Blackstone, tells us the story of the ghost in the crypt and explains more tricks that you yourself can perform. Listen in again to Blackstone, the world's greatest living magician. (laughs) 